Welcome, students, to our third lecture of Chapter 17, which I've divided into two separate PowerPoint presentations. During this one, we're going to talk a little bit more about amine substitution reactions. After studying the second part of this chapter, you should be able to know how to use the Gabriel synthesis and hydrogenation of alkyl acides to make primary amines, know the mechanism and products of nitrile hydrolysis, know how to use nitrile hydrogenation to make primary amines, know how to activate carboxylic acids, and apply all of this knowledge to total synthesis. Each of these numbers, 17.18, 19, 20, 21, are the sections in your textbook that cover each of these different topics. In this section, we will also learn about fats, oils, soaps, detergents, and micelles, and how nature activates carboxylic acids. We'll, of course, skip section 17.23. Back in chapter 10, we talked about how you can alkylate ammonia, NH3, shown here, to get primary amines like this. In other words, I could take ammonia and have the lone pairs on the nitrogen attack the alkyl group, kick off an alkyl halide, and generate an ammonium salt. When I neutralize that salt, I then get a prim primary amine, as shown here. Question is, do you think I could use this reaction to get a primary amine as my major product? The answer is unfortunately no. This would be a fantasy. I'll now explain why. In reality, alkylating ammonia is actually a very crappy way to make primary amines because it's almost impossible to stop the nitrogen from over, over alkylating like this. You get the nitrogen stirring with excess alkyl halide. You get a mixture of monoalkylated amine or ammonia, dialkylated ammonia, trialkylated ammonia, and quaternary ammonium salts all in mixture. You neutralize these three, you end up getting a mixture of primary, secondary, and tertiary amines along with isolated ammonium salts as a precipitate. So the question is, is there anything that we can do to isolate primary amines as our major product? The answer is yes. You can use the Gabriel synthesis. This is the Gabriel synthesis. We begin with this compound, which is called thalimid. I love how there's a pH and a th next to each other. I wish we could have more phs and ths next to each other more frequently. We could call it thalimid. In any event, you start with thalimid and treat it with hydroxide base. This deprotonates the nitrogen here, giving you a nitrogen anion. When this is stirred with alkyl halide, this nitrogen anion then attacks the alkyl group kicks off the halogen and gives you a singly alkylated a substituted imid intermediate. Now look at this. You think this compound right here is going to alkylate that nitrogen more than once? The answer is no. Not to a, any large extent anyway. As it turns out you can take this intermediate, treat it with acid, water, and heat, and then liberate phthalic acid and this ammonium salt that has a single alkyl group attached to the nitrogen. When neutralized with base, that gives you a primary amine as your exclusive major product. Now I've got a question. What alkyl bromide would you use in a Gabriel synthesis to prepare each of the following amines? As I'm going to discuss the answers to these questions on the next slide, it might be advisable for you to pause here and see if you can do them on your own. Here are the answers. The first amine in the question that I want to get is pentylamine. How would I do this using a Gabriel synthesis? Well, of course, I would begin with thalimid. I would treat it with hydroxide. This hydroxide deprotonates the nitrogen, giving me a nitrogen anion. Because I want to end up with pentylamine, I'm going to react it with pentyl bromide. This then makes it so that the nitrogen anion attacks the carbon bound to the bromine and kicks off bromide as a leaving group, giving me this intermediate. When I take this intermediate and react it with acid, water, and heat, 
it liberates my primary amine as the major product. So what's the summary of this reaction? The overall reaction is thalamid reacted in step one with hydroxide and pentylamine, and step two, acid, water, and heat. As we address the other, sub, or the other questions, we could basically do the exact same thing. All we have to do is alternate the identity of the alkyl bromide that we're adding to match the product that we want. The second question asks how we could get isohexylamine. So I'm going to stir thalimid, step one with hydroxide and isohexyl bromide, and step two HCl water and heat to liberate the primary amine as isohexylamine. The next question asks how I could get benzylamine. Now you should remember that a benzyl is a, uh, a, a name we give to a benzene ring that has a CH2 attached to it. So this product right here is benzylamine. If I want to form that, I stir thalimid with hydroxide and benzyl bromide. This is an abbreviation for that. And then take that intermediate and treat it with HCl water and heat. It liberates the primary amine as my major product. The last one is to treat thalimid with hydroxide and cyclohexyl bromide, followed by HCl water and heat to liberate my primary cyclohexylamine as the major product. As it turns out, there are other ways of making primary amines. This is a great way. What you can do is take an alkyl halide, like this alkyl bromide, and treat it with this compound, sodium azide, NaN3. Azide is actually an N3 with the minus charge on one of the nitrogens. It displaces the bromide to give this, which is called an alkyl azide. If you take that alkyl azide, which I've drawn the full structure here, and react it with hydrogen and palladium carbon, it will hydrogenate this nitrogen and leave you your primary amine exclusively. Another great way of making carboxylic acids is to hydrolyze nitriles. Here's the overall reaction. If I take a nitrile, as shown here, and I treat it with acid, water, and heat, I can convert this carbon from a nitrile carbon into a carboxylic acid carbon. Now you guys might have forgotten from earlier how to even make a nitrile. A very great way of doing it is by taking an alkyl bromide and treating it with cyanide nucleophile. The, carb, uh, the negatively charged carbon comes in, kicks off the bromide leaving group, and gives you your nitrile. So this is an excellent way to take alkyl bromides and convert them in two steps to carboxylic acids. Here's a poorly drawn mechanism of nitrile hydrolysis, which I borrowed from our textbook. I'm not going to cover these verbally, but I invite you to look at this mechanism yourselves, and if you have any questions, you can address uh, me in class. Another way of making primary amines is to hydrogenate a nitrile. In order to hydrogenate a nitrile down to a primary amine, I don't use palladium carbon as I would an azide. Instead, I use hydrogen gas and rainy nickel. Now I want to teach you how to activate carboxylic acids. As we've discussed earlier in this chapter, OHs aren't the best leaving groups. Is there a way then to convert an OH into a more reactive leaving group? The answer is yes. We've mentioned this before, but you can take a carboxylic acid and convert the OH into a Cl by treating it with thionyl chloride, which I affectionately refer to as SOCL2. You can also uh, make the same conversion by treating your carboxylic acid with phosphorus trichloride, or you can convert the carboxylic acid into an acid bromide by treating it with phosphorus tribromide. One thing that's useful about this is that chlorides and bromides are hot leaving groups, which means that you can take these products and displace these halogen atoms with a number of nucleophiles that would not be able to displace an OH quite as easily.